And this, I, I'm going to end with, I told you that the people kept calling us up, like, can you take my collection of uh, doorknob things? Like, these are, you know, things from hotels and, um, you know, uh, please do not disturb, essentially. I mean, the fact that, and there's collections of those things you find, the emergency air, air, airline, or the, you know, instructions for getting out of the airplane, I started collecting those myself until I realized that it was really wrong to do that. <laughs> you know, but, um, and then I think that was, yeah, that's it. Could I turn up and ask you just about your, a couple of questions about sure. collecting? Sure. Just without the... Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> John Cage was right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's amazing. You know, like, what, what was the impulse for you to put this on? What was the motivation behind that? Um, it initially came from this uh, institution called the America, or the Philadelphia Folklore Society. That were, they were celebrating their 100th anniversary and encouraged institutions to in Philadelphia to uh, develop programming that would somehow reflect uh, themes of folklore. You know, however we wanted to interpret it. Sort of like when Ingrid Schaffner did this big nothing show. Like, you know, this is the sort of thing that happens, I think, in cities like Philadelphia when institutions want to create a critical mass around an important theme or a, an anniversary. At the same time, I was thinking about um, this issue of collecting. And my friend Betty Ruth's pile of lint and sculpture that was being made by Ashley Biggerton and Katarina Fritsch and um, uh, what's his name, Alan McCollum and other, so trying to sort of figure out a way to, instead of, you know, find some folklore paintings or some artist who was working in a folksy way, and, uh, as I mentioned earlier, like having, having trouble with wanting to sort of just show more art, I wanted to sort of create, a, a, I thought, I, th that folklore invitation um, or that impetus sort of created a, a, a way for me to think about that stack of lint, which was critical, and then a way to sort of have a show that was about sculpture to some extent, that would be, not really have art in it, but, but be about art, you know, to some extent. I think that things that look like art are, are often um, much less interesting than things that are like art. And I mean, this is something I'm starting to sort of think about really aggressively. The, the problem with things that look like art, that are so interested in being art that they, they actually contradict themselves out of their desire to fit into this category rather than being this thing that's real, like the way these collections are. I think people who have this sort of, you know, honest passion that they can't be talked out of, you know, that, that sort of faithfulness to, to, the, to the object, whatever that is, sort of, you know, is much more interesting than, than somebody's, you know, wanting to be an artist and be clever about it. And so I think we're, you know, we're, in a way the collection becomes a sort of thing that becomes an example of what that phrase of art is what makes life more interesting than art.